Well, welcome back to Base Camp, WNC. As the title says, it's about the biggest spring box I think I've ever built. This is one either for me or Mr. Chuck. Uh, both our springs, I mean, both of them are quite old. And they pull out of the side of the hill and we get a little bit of dirt and sediment. And if you watched my channel before, you noticed that um, I, I rigged up a filter on the outflow pipe of it to try to catch some of the sediment. And it does a real good job. He has about the same problem with his that we're working on. Well, as I'm going to show you in this thing, it's really two 15-gallon drums. This is the top cut off of one, put on the bottom, and this is the top down here. And what this thing is for, of course, is water will come in here, and I've got a tube that will direct it to go down. Hopefully the dirt will settle out in the bottom. Then I have my usual filters coming up. This is the overflow pipe. And on this side here is where the filtered water will come out and go into the catchment system. So here it is. The water will come in this end of the pipe and come down. And what I have is a one inch piece of pipe going down about 18 inches. This three inch pipe just sits around it. We'll take it all apart in the build section. And got some slots on the bottom of it that'll force it to settle down there at the bottom. It'll give the sediment time to come up before it hits the filter. And uh, Mr. Chuck used my idea and put a filter on his and it lasts a couple weeks. I'm gonna show you, you can put a T in here and have two filters or a, get a cross and you can have three of them set in there and you just won't have to change your filter quite so often. But what we have is, hopefully this thing right here is going to be collecting a bunch of dirt and sediment. And of course this thing is 15 gallons, so it's going to hold 15 gallons at 8 pounds, 100, 100 pounds. So I'll put a valve on the bottom end here in this lid, that when you get ready to clean it out, in order to clean it out, all you'll have to do is open it, and it'll all come out. Right here we have the valve on the bottom of the lid and this thing up here. So if it happens to get full of dirt and mud, you can open the valve up from the bottom, poke a welding rod up in there and you can get all the water out. And the only thing you're gonna have to deal with when this whole thing falls out is just what dirt and mud's there. Instead of you having your hands caught underneath there with a hundred pound of water coming down on it in a mess. Well, I know it looks weird because I got a, a lid on this end and one on this end. And what I did is I cut 10 and a half inches off the top of another barrel. And of course, it'll fit right down over it. And this is my cut line. And this is where that other barrel sits on top of it. Let me show you how I marked it. And it's on a tapered edge and of course it's round so it's kind of hard but i found something here that's five inches tall set it against it and took a pen and just scribbled a line just kept turning the drum on and around and made a line all the way around it it's about as close as i need i'm going to take the saws all now and cut it off and try to put these two things together well there it is Went around and cut it. I guess I got a dog watering bowl. All I got to do now is get the dog for it. But this, of course, is the bottom end of my spring filtration system. And this will be the top, up on the top of it. Here's the big part of the drum on the bottom. A little piece I just, I'd already had cut. And then when you look down on the inside, if you can kind of see it right here. There, this is the bottom drum and this is the top one. And we got about an inch and a half all the way around. We can pour some food grade silicone caulk on that thing and some bolts. Well, I set the two together. And to kind of keep it straight, I went around and it's all about 27 inches high all the way around. Kind of keep it square. 
and of course this is plastic so it slides so I put a, a ratchet strap around underneath of it back up the other side and pulled it down that way it held it tight and I went ahead and just put four of these self-tapping metal screws in there well I took it apart and I used this Lexel stuff and it's uh it says it sticks to almost in anything everything but this plastic this HDPE plastic ain't much sticks to it I do have a mark here to line up when I put it back together so my first holes all line up so we're gonna go ahead and now put a bead around the top edge and slide the two together and attach them well, there it looks glued or sealed bolted together As you can kind of tell I cut the end of the bolt sticking off kind of made a mess when the grinder hit that glue but there it is on the inside with all the carriage bolt heads just sticking there glued and sealed up we wait for this sealer right here to harden and we'll fill it full of water and see if my idea is going to work here okay now we're here at the barrel now this thing right here is where the handle was so this is why I went with two inch a lot bigger than I needed but the problem was I had something like this right here is what actually holds on to the handle so I couldn't make a hole smaller so this right here is just a two and a quarter inch hole saw will actually make the right size hole for a two inch male adapter just to screw right in and this HDPE plastic went ahead and put a bunch of Teflon tape on the fitting it'll screw right on in and believe it or not that thing will be watertight now but on the inflow side that's all it is we just screw this fitting in here here's the whole bunch of stuff we need and this is just a a two to one threaded adapter and it'll actually get glued in there and this is where the black poly pipe from the spring will come in on the inside we use a two inch female adapter and it just screws on the inside of the pipe just like that that's all it'll do And then we have a two inch to one inch producer that we're going to slide in there. And everything inside this barrel I don't glue because this way if you have to clean it and take it apart it's a whole lot easier just to un remove this stuff and take it out. Man would you look at that the sun's finally starting to come out. It'll be out for about five minutes and then it's going to go back to raining. Well, let me show you this before I put it in. This is about 18 inches long, just a 90 with a short piece. And then what this will actually do is fit down in that pipe. And it'll be sitting right here on the bottom part of this lid right here. And this is actually made to fit right in there like that. And then all the water will have to flow out these little slots, hopefully slow it down. Because what I had before on mine down there at the spring that I saw is it came out of this hole. The filter was hooked to the next one and the, all the dirty water, all the sediment just went right straight to the filter. What I'm trying to do is direct this thing down into the drum and let it settle before it hits the filters. So let's go ahead and put this stuff in. Let me put this bottom back on and I'll show it to you. Well, I'll show you putting this thing together, then I'll take the bottom back off and show it to you. We set the pipe down. And actually, it'll set right over top of that dimple on that bottom lid. And then it just plugs into the inflow hole. And this piece of pipe fits right there. So now all the water coming in from the spring comes in here and it's forced down this pipe inside this one and hopefully it'll settle down some before it comes back up 
and heads out this hole here, which holds the filters on. And like I said, this right here was my idea on the other video was this would plug into the uh, to the outside of the drum and you have a standard in-house sediment filter and it slides these things you can buy at any big box store hardware store but it slides right over top this piece of three quarter inch pipe you don't have to do no modifications so if and like i said this is it plugs in right here to the drum this way you can either come straight out and have one or you can have two if you buy a one inch or make this all three quarter inch you can have a cross and actually have three of them and the only thing I think it's not going to clean the water any better. What it's going to do is give you a better flow. Um, just that you may not have to. I think Chuck said he had to fill, change his filter. He started seeing a, a decrease in water pressure. But what you would have is I only have one filter here right now. The other one's down in the spring. You would have two filters there. And it may be instead of having to change the filters or go down and wash them. You don't really change them. You just wash them out. But in, uh, instead of doing that every two weeks, you might only have to do it once a month. Well, here's the lid. This would actually be the inside. And like I said, this little dimple right here just worked out perfect. Because that three inch piece of pipe just fits right over it. Not that it's going to go anywhere, but it wouldn't get knocked around. And then this is the I got four holes, probably didn't need that many. Probably didn't need but one, maybe. But I wanted to real slow. I want that water to slowly come out. So it does have four of these notches cut in it. They're about three quarter inches wide, three inches high. There's no general spec to it. But this is just the, the part that screws into the lid. And all it is is a, a half inch valve I drilled a three quarter inch hole and once again screwed that male adapter right into this lid. Put a female adapter on it and this is just a short piece of pipe stuck down there with some holes. And it just comes up into the drum lid. And there it is. Of course this just snaps on the bottom of the drum. You have a half inch valve. And then this hole right here, like I said, well, this pipe will go over it and the other pipe's in there. Well, here it is, back together. Like I said, I mean, it's just coming in, forced down that one inch pipe so it can settle. This is, I left the T in here. Two filters, or you could have three. Overflow, water's going back out. And the whole purpose of this whole thing is, is my spring will generate a fair amount of sediment over a year's time. And it's just, if it didn't have some way of getting it out, it'd be really hard to get down. I mean, it, it's hard to get down through one of the commercially built sediment things and try to get the sediment out the bottom with the water flowing in. And this way, I'll probably end up with an inch or two of silt by the end in a year. I can just undo this bottom clamp, take the whole thing, that drain the water, take the whole thing down. It'll be a lot easier. And trying to dip water out of a 15 gallon blind hole but if this interests you you got any questions or anything else give me a shout i do go around and do this thing this is what we do here i do carolina homestead planter does come out and install things and build things and all kind of weird creations but if this helps you let me know and if you've taken my idea and modified it Take some, I'd really like to have a video of it, but take pictures of it. Let me know. I want to put it on the channel. We're going to have these little sections when people do these things. Because if you're modifying mine to make yours, you might be able to help somebody else out that might not have come up with that same idea how you modified it. I'll give you the claim for it. I'll give you credit. If you got a YouTube channel, I'll tell you who, the, I'll tell everybody who you are that did it. But like as usual, like it, share it, subscribe, tell your friends about it. I'll see you next time and be more than glad to help.